Hi, Huckleberry here, and today I teach you public key cryptography. Specifically, I'm going to explain to you how cryptography works and how it allows you to do online shopping. We're so used to online shopping, that is e-commerce, that we take it for granted. But e-commerce would not be possible at all without public key cryptography. Not only will I explain to you the details of public key cryptography and how that makes e-commerce possible, but I'm going to explain it in just a few minutes, and I'll explain it without math using a black box model. Let's start by taking a brief look at classic cryptography, which has been around for thousands of years. Classic cryptography is also called secret key cryptography or symmetric key cryptography, or just symmetric cryptography. A cipher is some sort of mathematical algorithm that we use to scramble text. In the black box model, the cipher itself is the black box into which we input plain text and the key. The plain text is the message that we wish to encrypt, and the key is simply a string of numbers generally binary ones and zeros. The output we get from the black box is called ciphertext, which is the plain text that has been encrypted in such a way that it can only be decrypted by someone who has the same key that originally encrypted the data in the first place. Some examples of symmetric cryptography that are used today are DES, or DES, triple DES, and AES. These are the same as the ciphers used for thousands of years in that the same key encrypts and decrypts them. However, the modern algorithms are much, much stronger. Now, if we use a good cipher such as AES, the only way an attacker can decrypt the ciphertext or decrypt the ciphertext is to try every possible key which is called a brute force attack. Now that's why the longer the key, the more security you get. Now supposing Bob wants to buy something on the website Alice.com. He, he needs to make sure his personal information cannot be seen by anyone eavesdropping on his conversation over the public internet. At first glance, it seems easy enough for Bob to encrypt his plain text personal information with symmetric cryptography using a secret key, send it across the internet in an encrypted fashion, and then have Alice decrypt the information with the same secret key. The problem arises, how do Bob and Alice both get the same secret key while making sure no one else gets the key? The answer is that no one has ever thought of a very efficient way. To do this, a whole new type of encryption called public key encryption, also called asymmetric encryption, had to be invented first. The fact is it was invented in the 1970s, thousands of years after mankind first started using cryptography. The main innovation in public key cryptography is that every individual gets not just one key, but a key pair. The pair is generated together. One key is called the private key, while the other is called the public key. The qualities of the keys are, even if the public key is known, it is impossible to determine from this what the private key is. A message can be encrypted using either the public key or the private key. Now, if the public key has been used to encrypt a message, then only the corresponding private key can decrypt it. Likewise, if the private key has been used to encrypt the message, then only the corresponding public key can encrypt it or decrypt it. When an individual has a key pair, he openly publishes the public key, but never tells anyone the private key. 
the security of the method depends on never letting anyone know your private key. These qualities of the key pair represent a huge technical breakthrough that makes e-commerce possible at all. When studied as a black box, it may seem like magic, but there's a large amount of mathematics behind it. But there is one side to asymmetric cryptography, and that is that the encryption speed is about a thousand times slower than symmetric cryptography, or an algorithm like AES. Therefore, asymmetric cryptography is generally only used for key exchange purposes, while symmetric cryptography is used for bulk data encryption. So now let's see how Bob would buy something on Alice.com website using the public key encryption, also known as asymmetric. Now Alice.com has already generated a key pair and she allows anybody to get a hold of her public key. Bob takes Alice's public key and uses it to encrypt his personal credit card information. He sends this ciphertext across the public internet over to Alice.com. Now remember, since it was encrypted with Alice's public key, it can only be decrypted with Alice's private key. Now since Alice never shares her private key, she's the only one that can decrypt the message. Just, and that guarantees its confidentiality over the public internet. When Alice receives the message, she simply decrypts it with her private key that only she has. Sounds like a pretty good system, right? And the math that makes this whole key pair idea work is an incredible accomplishment. But there's still a problem that should be keeping Bob up at night. The problem is, how does Bob know if the public key that he thinks belonged to Alice might actually belong to some black hat or a bad guy that's only impersonating Alice? The answer is digital certificates. Digital certificates are created by trusted parties called certificate authorities, or CAs. The digital certificate is Bob's assurance that what he thinks is Alice's public key is actually Alice's public key. The CA is saying something like this. I attached Alice.com's public key to this digital certificate and then signed a hash of it with my own private key. Okay, we just use a new term, hash, above, so let's define it before going on any further. Hash functions, also called message digests or one-way encryption, are algorithms that, that need no key or they use no key. You can take a plain text message of any length and put it into the hashing algorithm and what you get out is an encrypted or hash string of characters of a specific length depending upon what hashing algorithm was used. The two most common hashing algorithms are SHA-1 and MD5. Now MD5 produces a 128-bit hash from any size plain text and SHA-1 produces a 160-bit hash value from any plain text size. Be sure you understand that hashes are one-way encryption. You cannot take a hash and decrypt it to find the original string that created it. Once again, this is based on a great deal of math behind it, although we just see the hashing algorithm as a black box. Okay, so now we come back to where I said earlier. The CA is saying something like this. I attached Alice.com's public key to this digital certificate and then signed a hash of it with my own private key. What the CA does here is hash the entire contents of the digital certificate, including the public key, using either SHA-1 or MD5. 
when the CA attaches the hash to the certificate and signs it, that is, encrypts it with their private key. So the certificate now consists of a plain text portion, including the public key, to which is attached a hash of the certificate signed or encrypted by the CA's private key. And remember, when we say the hash is signed by the CA's private key, this is the same, the same as saying that the hash is encrypted by the CA's private key. When Bob gets a certificate that he needs to verify is good, he creates his own hash of the plain text part of the certificate and compares it to the attached hash that, only, that he's only able to decrypt with the CA's public key. If the two hashes match, then Bob knows that the public key on the certificate is actually the one put there by the CA and has not been changed in transit. And since Bob trusts the CA, he now believes that this is truly Alice.com's public key. There's one question left, and that is, where does Bob get the CA's public key that he needs above? Big CAs like GoDaddy and VeriSign negotiate to have their public keys included in various browsers such as Internet Explorer, Firefox, and Chrome. These certificates are called self-signed certificates or root certificates. When your browser sees these root certificates, it automatically trusts them. Now let's look at an actual session where Bob tries to buy something from Alice.com, which requires him to pass confidential information, such as credit card information, across the public internet. The protocol that's used is called SSL, which stands for Secure Socket Layer. Actually, SSL is generally now replaced with a more secure TLS, which stands for Transport Layer Security. But SSL and TLS are similar enough that we don't need to differentiate the, between the two for this tutorial. So we'll just go on talking about SSL. Now, SSL implements three types of assurances through cryptography. One is authentication, so Bob knows that he's really talking to Alice.com. Two is confidentiality. Bob knows that uh, unauthorized uh, people can't read his message. And the third is integrity. Bob knows that his message has not been changed in transit. Let's watch as Bob, an internet customer using his browser, connects to the internet server and merchant Alice.com. Bob sends a plain text hello message and selects parameters for the conversation. So the version could either be TLS version 1 or SSL version 2. The key exchange could be RSA or Diffie-Hellman. The uh, secret key cipher method is either triple DES or AES. And the message digest or the hash is going to be, uh, could be either SHA-1 or MD-5. And they choose a data compression method of um, either PKZIP or GZIP, and a random, a random number is chosen. Now, Alice.com responds with her choice of cryptographic parameters. So she says, okay, let's use TLS version 1. We'll use a key exchange of RSA. We'll use a secret key uh, cipher method of AES. We'll use a message digest method of, of SHA-1 um, and a compression method of PKZIP. And also, here's another random number. So the above agreement is called a cipher suite. These are the parameters that they will communicate with from now on. Notice above that we encounter RSA for the first time. RSA is a popular public key cryptography algorithm that is currently used. Now, Alice.com sends Bob its digital certificate. 
a trusted Route CA has previously signed Alice's certificate. Bob uses his trusted copy of that particular Route CA's public key to verify Alice's certificate and the enclosed public key. Remember that internet browsers install trusted or root CA certificates. Now they do the key agreement. Bob generates a 48-byte random number called a premaster secret. He encrypts it with Alice's public RSA key and sends it to her. Then Alice decrypts the premaster secret with her matching private RSA key. Now, both Alice.com and Bob each have the same premaster secret value. Now the RSA part is complete, but there are actually six secret keys that are needed for bulk encryption that we are about to do with AES. There is one key for encryption, a second key for message integrity, and a third key to initialize the cipher. That's a total of six keys since we need one in each direction. To generate the above six keys, Alice and Bob use the premaster secret, the random values they just exchanged in the hello messages, and a pseudo-random function, or a, or a PRF, to independently and simultaneously generate six identical keys on each end. Now Bob sends Alice.com a message encrypted with the shared secrets. The message, called the finished handshake message, is the first encrypted message with the keys that Bob and Alice independently generates, or independently generated. Alice responds to Bob with her own unencrypted finished handshake message. Now Bob is assured he must be communicating with Alice.com because Bob sent the premaster secret encrypted with Alice's RSA public key, and only Alice.com could have decrypted the premaster secret used to calculate the six shared secret keys. Now Alice and Bob can now begin to use their six keys for bulk data encryption using the asymmetric algorithm AES, such as for ordering merchandise with a credit card. That is the end of this video. This has been Huckleberry. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please mash down that uh, like button, and I also hope you'll subscribe. Thank you.